Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Radium, and today I have another episode of my Terraria Druid playthrough from Mod of Redemption. Now, this is going to be a really fun episode, I believe, because last time we got a really good feel of the class, I think. As in, I've never really used this class all that much, but it was still really good fun to do. And more than anything, I'm really excited to continue playing. So, first of all, there's a very obvious little challenge I want to do, but it's going to take me a minute to set up, so if you'll just bear with me, I'll have it ready in a moment. After some meticulous preparation, my main goal for this episode is to complete pre-hard mode completely. That means defeating every single unique boss pre-hard mode has to offer, and just, yeah, fighting all the bosses at least once and defeating each boss. Starting off, we have the Heart of Thorns, which summons Thorn, Bane of the Forest. This is quite an easy fight. I'm just going to use the Nature's Gloom Shroom Seed Bag, and we should be good to go in terms of this fight. Although I'm still not 100% um, convinced it's going to be too easy. Um, and I retract that statement, this is doing a lot of damage. Like, even more so than I was expecting, and oh, wow, okay. Well, this is a thing. Even though I'm taking stupid hits, this is just amazing. And this stuff is probably quite good if you're accurate as well. It's something I commented on last time, saying I didn't really like it, because when you're fighting these kind of bosses in Modern Redemption, you do need to be paying a lot of attention to enemies normally, but that fight was easy enough, and from it we didn't get anything too good. The next boss we have to do is the Anomaly Detector, which summons the Seed of Infection as far as I understand. So it starts off with this uh, strange portal to say the least, it's nothing spectacular and it dies very quickly with this. But, you know, it, it is something, I suppose, and, yeah, with these starves combined, it should be a very good battle. Um, be it slightly annoying at this stage, but it'll get easier, don't you worry. Because there is a second phase where the boss gets bigger, and here we go. And, yeah, there we go, the Seed of Infection has officially arrived. This is a boss I'm not actually that good at, because I don't play Mod of Redemption much. So, you know, it could potentially amount to me some issues, but I'm optimistic right now. Let's just hope these enemies drop mana stars, and then we're pretty much set to do this fight. I have to say, having a row of platforms is really helping this fight, for me personally. And yeah, it's just because I can dash around pretty freely. And if I do this, then I don't really need to worry about full damage either. However, the Gloom Shroom Bag is still the powerhouse in terms of DPS for me. At least for the time being, and that was stupid. Okay, this fight is definitely getting more interesting now, but it's still relatively easy. And having myself um, a Goblin Tinkerer to make some, well, Tinkerer's Workshop accessories would really help, in all honesty. Because taking full damage is the reason I might honestly lose this fight, which kind of sucks, but I mean, what can you do? Despite all the struggles, however, I believe we have done the fight, because, you know, this thing is good at taking 500 health out. And there we go. So the creatures have begun getting infected, which is something I didn't really discuss much in my original Mod of Redemption playthrough. There is a story arc which is activated by defeating the Seed of Infection that creates an entire new biome, and it's really, really cool. Additionally, we unlock Xenomite, which is a valuable resource throughout the game. Next up, we have the Queen Bee, which is, I'll be perfectly honest, slightly less exciting than what we've seen before. But that's okay, it doesn't need to be a big boss every time, it just needs to be a simple fight. And hopefully one that we can win, most importantly, because, you know, you never know what kind of bosses can amount you an issue. To make the fight even more of a joke, the small bees that come out of the queen itself drop even more hearts. I mean, mana stars, sorry, and hearts, actually, yeah, but still. The main priority is keeping the mana topped up so we can continue using the Gloom Shroom Bag as much as possible, as this is still by far my best weapon. Yeah, this fight was an absolute cakewalk. I really didn't know why I expected this to be kind of difficult. But this is just annihilating the boss, and it's still doing so. Like, well, yeah, the fight's over. GG's. I don't actually think there's anything too interesting I can get from this fight, unfortunately, so I'm just going to trash it all. But I'm happy to have done the fight for the achievement. And last but not least, we have the Wall of Flesh to do. Okay, guys, I've decided that we are going to fight the Wall of Flesh now. I know it's kind of early on, all things considered. But, yeah, I really just think we're able to do the fight now, and I might as well activate hard mode as early as possible. Besides, I am confident in my ability and the shroom bag, which is definitely one of the best things I've used so far. And, yeah, I'm just excited, in all honesty, to get into it. Alright, let's just summon the boss and see how well this works. Again, I'm unfamiliar with how this is going to work, but in my opinion, mana potions shouldn't be a problem to use, because they give you the mana sickness buff. Which does not reduce druid damage, it only reduces magic damage, if that makes sense. So yeah, that's my thought process behind it. So we shouldn't actually, yeah, we don't lose damage with the seed bag. Which is, you know, 
kind of an exploit, I suppose, because, you know, I'm sure we're supposed to reduce damage with that kind of thing. If it uses mana in the first place, but, you know, I'll take it for sure. In truth, this weapon isn't actually as effective as I first intended it to be, or thought it would be for this fight. But it's still doing pretty well. It seems to... Well, it seems that if you get far away from the boss, it pretty much doesn't do any damage. Because the projectiles like disappear before they even really get to hit anything unfortunately so that is kind of a dud but it'll definitely do enough damage to kill the boss before we reach the end of the world I think okay we are making really good progress on defeating the boss my apologies for the loud clicks if you are hearing them but uh, it is what it is it's hopefully not too bad and yeah this is going surprisingly well again I was expecting to win this because this thing is amazing but still Alright, the last 10% of the fight is among us. Um, oh god, I just realised the boss is about to be as fast as us. And this might be the last batch of um, boost I need. Let's see, the boss is on 100 health. He's getting really quick, but we just about pull ahead as the fight ends. And there we go. The ancient spirits of light and dark have been released. So that does mean we've officially entered hard mode. The enemies are going to be stronger, everything's going to be more difficult. And we've got absolutely nothing that's going to help us, just as Terraria intends it. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do with today is go to the left of my base, kind of far away, and make some prisons, because quite frankly I need some NPCs and I'm too lazy to ruin Rigot's build. Um, just because, you know, I don't want to mess anything up, so the only other alternative is ruining this. I guess whilst I'm here I should start working through the basic tiers of progression in pre-hard mode, like the ores. So obviously like Cobalt, Mithril, Adamantite, etc. In truth, I don't actually know whether there's a druid set I can get, but I still want to do the process anyways, as getting a bunch of adamantite I can see being really helpful. Or titanium for that matter, come to think of it. Okay, here we go. Let's continue destroying these. Um, I pretty much can destroy every single demon altar in my world, because I have one back at base. And then, we, yeah, we just don't need to worry, and we can get as many different ores as possible. Oh, there we go, that should suffice in terms of cobalt. We don't need much, because I've already gathered like 50 of it, I think. But, there we go. Okay, yeah, we have more than enough for the pickaxe now. I think it's 15 for the cobalt one, and 18 for the other man type. Okay, here we go, another big clump of mithril to mine. Again, we only need about 100 mithril, I think. Well, exactly 100, but you need much more for auric alchem. So, in a sense, it's very good that we got the lesser tiers of ores, because they're just cheaper. And there we go, I think that is officially enough mithril to do this. Um, 102, yep, that should be fine. So, obviously, we need to make the bars. Then we need to construct the anvil, and then I believe that is still enough for the pickaxe. Let's see. And yeah, I'm correct. So now we can just go look for the adamantite, and then we can make some massive upgrades. Thanks to Vein Miner, even these absolutely massive chunks of ore can be pretty much mined instantly. And it's not unfair because all it does is speed up efficiency. Wait, I've just realised, I think this is a new ore, if I'm correct. I don't know what it is, it's dragon lead. Okay. Um, I think this is a pretty hard mode item, but that's still pretty cool to have, and I've just never seen it before, so I'll definitely keep taking that for whenever I find it. Okay guys, I accidentally left my mic on mute, but with the adamantite I made, I did some minor upgrades to say the least. Uh, the only real one I've actually kept, however, is this staff, which is the adamantite stave. It does look pretty good, it's kind of basic, but it does enough damage, and it pierces a single enemy, which is kind of helpful. And the boss I'm going to do now, as like the first boss in all of hard mode, is the Infected Eye. This is a relatively simplistic fight as far as I understand, but it's definitely one I need to do. So I'm just going to craft four spawners, and I need to check something with the Xenomites. Additionally, now that I've entered hard mode, I can finally access Loi AFK's golden item, the Unlimited Buffs. I know this is kind of unfair, but I think it's perfectly valid considering it's obtainable at this stage, and so I'm using it. For those who have not seen this item before, by the way, it's practically every single buff in Vanilla Soraria compiled into one item, and it gives you some really good stat boosts, which are just gonna help turn the tables on the bosses. Okay, let's give this a go then. Um, I don't really know how this is going to go, because the fight is very, very difficult, but we have enough movement to avoid the boss properly now, and with the right-click summon, we're going to do even more damage against this boss. Okay, we are doing decent damage, although this thing is definitely not optimal for this fight due to it having pierce and this is a single hitbox. But I mean, it's getting the job done and it will be the weapon that's going to help us win this fight overall. I'd say for sure the most dangerous part of this entire fight is that debuff. The debuff of the infected eye is absolutely malicious and it pretty much poisoned you for like 25 seconds. And that'll not really allow me to heal properly for most of the fight. 
Okay, we seem to have activated a new phase because the boss is at half health. I don't know whether this fight is two phases or not, but it definitely does look more advanced now, if that makes sense. So I just need to keep my guard up and just keep spinning around the boss, really. Okay, we've got our summon back up. This is where the big damage really creeps in. And the boss is actually very simple to dodge, although the AI is kind of sporadic in terms of how it moves. It's not the hardest thing in the world to manage, and he's already down to 6,000, I mean 5,000 health. In all honesty though, this is one of the most satisfying fights to do, just because it's very simple, it's got a brilliant tune. The fight is very difficult as well, but perfectly manageable at pretty much any stage of hard mode. And yeah, it's just a joy to play, and I'm very happy to say that we've pretty much beaten it. Okay, 500 health now, we're getting really, really close, and there we go, boom. A nuke has been dropped on our world as well, which is definitely something interesting that I'm going to have to check out in a moment. But let's loot our treasure bag first, obviously. So we've got the Infectious Jav uh, sorry, Javelin, which is something I can't use, and it works kind of like the North Pole. A uh, very cool looking weapon, actually. We got a precise anti-crystallizer band, as far as I understand, and it makes you immune to all Xenomite infections. That's going to be amazing for this playthrough. And then additionally, there are just these uh, serums, which do the same thing. And yeah, it's alright. I just realised that boss dropped pure Xenomite, which is going to be really helpful. Again, I don't see it being used for an armour yet, but that's okay. Um, there are a bunch of really cool items I'm going to be using it for, by the looks of things. My next significant goal is going to be tracking down where this nuke drops. Uh, I don't really understand how it works or where it's going to drop in the first place. But yeah, I'm going to find it quickly and meet you guys back once it's been located. Okay, well, I think I located the nuke, if I'm being honest, okay. Here we go, here is the biome, and there's already enemies spawning on me, which is kind of scary. This is where the Gloom Shroom Bag is going to come into play again, because it's very good for um, crowd control. And the main goal is going to be locating loads of Starlight, I believe it's called, which is a resource you get from killing these enemies. I now realise these staves are actually really weak against these kind of enemies, and we are going to need a big upgrade very quickly. There we go, though, that's the Starlight we need. As well as that, they drop Xenomite, which is obviously going to be helpful. And yeah, let's just get into the main biome. This place has a really cool aesthetic, by the way. And this looks like a new type of wood as well, which is, you know, interesting. Petrified wood, so... I'll grab this as well, just in case it's used for anything interesting. I don't really know. But then again, it could be. This biome is something I didn't really check out much last time, actually, and it's absolutely amazing in terms of the content. It's just really, really cool looking and really fun to see, honestly. So taking out these enemies is obviously going to be important, and once I have the resources to craft some new stuff, I'll let you guys know. Okay, I'm going to quickly make myself another item. I believe it's called the Xenoforge. Yep, there we go. And I'm just going to place this as this allows us to craft items like Starlight Bars, which are going to be really, really important later on. As well as that, I'll turn all of my Xenomite shards into Xenomite, or at least most of it. And now we can make a bunch of really cool weapons. All I'm going to be making is the Xenomite Staff. Again, apparently it's pretty good, but I can't really confirm yet. This seems like it would be very good for the Destroyer, or maybe Skeletron Prime, but again, I can't really confirm much yet. Okay guys, it would appear that I'm really dumb because I managed to lose that fight, but I really don't want to do the Destroyer first, it's just not a fun fight to do. So I'm going to settle on Skeletron Prime, and I want to test out this Xeno Staff anyways, or the Xenomite Staff I should say, just to see if it's really any good. Yeah, our primary directive after this fight is to get ourselves a new weapon. I don't know if there's a Hallowed Stave or anything, but if there is, then I'm definitely making it. And additionally, fighting the Goblin Army, because, yeah, I just need to get the Goblin Tinkerer. Okay, the turret is almost dead, and that's definitely going to help in terms of making the fight simpler. But it's already been another night, and I had to use a night potion to keep it dark, otherwise I would have died. So, yeah, this, this is just honestly annoying more than difficult. Okay, I think we took out another arm, which was the cannon, I believe. Or whichever one shoots bombs, so now I've only got the two annoying arms. I can just dash left and right, and the boss will eventually fall, so... But just because of how boring this fight is, I'm going to cut to when we get to that point. Okay, now it's just ahead. Okay, well, this is fun. This was honestly probably one of the worst Skeletron fights, period, because it's just very long and very annoying. And now it's just a matter of time until the boss is dead, but that doesn't excuse the fight from taking about 12 minutes. We definitely need the weapon upgrades so badly. Okay, last 1,000 health now. This was absolutely horrendous to do. But I'm happy to say it's almost over, and once we do this, then hopefully there's a hallowed stave we can make. And that'll increase our DPS massively. That's the plan, at least. 
Okay, here we go, the Hallowed Stave. It's average speed, and it's literally just a copy of the Adamantite Stave, but it does slightly more damage. Uh, we got no, like, debuff or buff on it, unfortunately, but since the goblins will be here tomorrow, uh, thanks to this goblin battle standard I got, you know, that's not too bad. Another plus of this weapon is that it's significantly better at crowd control than the Adamantite Stave, because it's got a lot more pierce. Okay, there we go, that's the goblin army defeated. And although that wasn't too su substantial in terms of anything, really, they dropped a couple of things I'm interested in, such as these nightshade plants. Again, I don't know what they're used for, or pretty much any utilities they have, but I'll definitely check it out once this summer is dead. Okay, I think I just missed this earlier on. It's a pretty hard mode item, unfortunately, so nothing too special again. But you never know, it could come in handy later on. Well, okay, we finally found the bound goblin, as long as that slime doesn't kill him. Uh, that would be hopefully ideal. But yeah, let's just hope that we can get to the goblin before, you know, the slime does what the slime does. Okay, there we go, we rescued him. Now that we can speak to him, all I'm going to buy is the rocket boots and the Tinkerer's Workshop, and for the time being, get out of here so I can give him a house. Okay, I think I have everything to make these upgrades, so yeah, let's get into it. So first of all, let's place the Tinkerer's Workshop to get the Spectre boots. Then we can craft the Lightning boots. Um, if I take these off... Then we can first of all make the frost spark boots as well, but we can make the blizzard, sandstorm, and cloud in the bottle as far as I understand, and I need to take this off as well. In which we will combine to make the bundle of balloons, which is obviously going to be a really good accessory. I'll be a little bit late in the series to get it, but still, it's okay. Now it's time to reforge all of this stuff. I only need relatively good reforges, and Mother Nature is pretty much the legendary of staves, I think. So that's pretty good, and now I'm just going to go for menacing. Okay, Destroyer is here. Let's just try to obliterate the boss, I suppose. I don't know how much damage this weapon's going to do, and it does not have infinite pierce, which is obviously going to be a big problem. But at the same time, I feel like we'll do pretty well. Okay, I did find a use for the Xenomite Stave, at least. It seems to be better than the Hallowed one in this fight. Um, because it shoots the three beams, I reforged it so it does a lot more damage, because I just realised I was using a really bad one in the Skeletron Prime fight. And it pierces loads of different segments really well, which is nice to see. Yeah, th this kind of scenario is the absolute best for the weapon. It does tons and tons of damage in that kind of scenario. And even in places like this, it's really good. And yeah, this is just overall going really, really well. Okay, this fight went infinitely quicker than I was expecting it to. I thought this boss was going to be really hard for Druid, honestly, when I saw that the seed bag wasn't working too well. But I'm happy to say I've got a bunch of really good starves, and if I pair this up with this, I feel like it's going to do even more damage. Okay, the boss is pretty much on the cusps of death now, which is really good. And I mean, yeah, there we go. The boss is... Oh, wait, never mind. Okay, the boss has fallen. <laughs> I mean, honestly, I feel like I'm going to leave this episode here because we have achieved so, so much of this. We've pretty much gone from killing Skeletron to killing Skeletron Prime and the Destroyer, which is crazy progress. And overall, I feel like I'm beginning to get a really good feel of what this class is capable of. So thank you all so much for watching, and yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Peace out, guys.